my name is Mandy Evans, and well, I was going to make a special effects tutorial video, but I sort of had an accident. Yay! <laughs> no, but in all honesty, uh, my name's Mandy. I'll be doing this special effects tutorial video, and what we'll be making is, well, this. If you could see that. It is supposed to be, at first it was supposed to be a surgical incision type of wound, but then I changed it. It's more of a surgical gone wrong type of wound. wound. Something you can use for if you have a character or any character that, at all that kind of is from escape from a mad doctor who wanted to cut them open, dissect them, and got a wound out of it. <laughs> So yeah, the things you'll be needing for this would be a baby powder, liquid latex. You're gonna need olive oil so that it doesn't stick to any hair that you have may, may have there. Two rose palettes. If you have these, you can use eyeshadow if you don't. I bought these off of Amazon. They're cheap. Powder. Uh, skin tone powder and foundation of your skin tone or unless unless you're like me who's extremely pale and apparently doesn't have the skin tone that I own you can use white with a different skin tone to make it very very bright or whatever you're gonna need something called scar wax or skin putty whatever the internet says it is it is flour and Vaseline you're gonna need one part Vaseline, two to three parts flour, and about double that. Yeah, double that, you're gonna. And if you're a darker skin tone than this, just put cocoa powder into it, because it will make it darker. And if you have any, you can use cream makeup. Coagulated blood, or congealed blood, and stage blood. If you don't, no, can't buy this off of Amazon, or don't want to, or can't because it's too late. S corn syrup and, uh, yeah, corn syrup and uh, red food dye will be the best, because that's basically what this is. Brushes that you're willing to destroy with fake blood. is little containers for latex. Clay, this is a clay tool. Little clay knife. Paint, spatula, this one, if you don't have any more, you can use a uh, plastic butter knife, cotton swabs, and a bunch of toothpicks. You're also going to need a little lid that you're fine with, plastic lid, uh, so you can use it for your latex. Co uh, cosmetic sponges, you're going to need that. Um, you're going to also need... I didn't let this dry enough. Uh, my floor looks like I murdered someone. Because it's ins Yeah, don't do what I'm doing, where I'm walking around with this while uh, it's not dry yet. That's about it. We'll start soon. Also, don't do this in your room. Do this at your kitchen table. Or dining room table. Or counter. Don't do this in your room. You will ma make a big mess. And you will be responsible for it. Don't do it on carpet. Don't do it on anywhere you have carpet. Because if you drop latex on carpet, it's never going to come out. My floor looks like a murderer scene. Yeah, let's get to it. Yay. All right, so what you'll be needing for this first step is a plastic lid with your liquid latex in it. And then you get one of your cosmetic sponges. I can find where all my are. Ah, you need to get one of your cosmetic sponges. Or cosmetic wedges, whatever. And you're just gonna start on whatever area you're doing this on. It can be on any appendage, appendage, it doesn't matter. You're just gonna start getting some on your sponge and just start dabbing it. You're gonna want two to three layers. You can have more than that, but two to three are my recommendation. And you're just gonna start dabbing it in the area of where you're gonna be putting this wound. So it doesn't matter if it's 
starts to kind of rip off and it's just bumpy. It's all going to be hidden by the, um, by the scar wax, but the edges, however, you're going to want the edges smooth. So whatever is your general area of your wound, like the center, try and keep, that can be built up, built up and, uh, rip off and be bumpy, but the edges you want smooth. So just keep on dabbing it. Be gentle. If it starts, if you feel like it's starting to rip off or something, you're going to want to stop, let it dry, then do it again. If it starts to dry on your cosmetic sponge, get a new one. If there's dried latex on a cosmetic sponge and you put more latex on it and then put it on your arm, it's going to rip off the latex on your arm. So, yeah. Once, if you don't want to have to just let it air dry, you're going to have to... You can use, put your fan on high, go sit outside if it's hot, uh, use a hairdryer. I say use a hairdryer, though. You're going to want it to be evenly dry, so make sure to, make sure, yeah, make sure you dry the entire thing and not leave anything wet when you start a new layer. But, yeah, that's the first step. All right, for the next step, do not mind this. This, this was an accident. I bent my arm and it pulled. That's fine. You, you can fix it. So the next thing we're going to be doing is you're getting your scar wax, which is a mixture of Vaseline and flour. So you'll need two to three parts flour and one part Vaseline. Or what I do is I get in until it's a good consistency. Or it's not too sticky and not too not sticky. Dry. So, if you have a darker skin tone, or just have one that's not really this, you can add cocoa powder to it, and it allows you to have, gives it a darker color. Or if you're like me, who is extremely pale, and this doesn't fit my skin tone, as you can tell, um, you can use a bunch of concealer. Alright, so, what we're going to be doing is you're going to be taking oh my hair, just a bit of this, just a bit of it at first, and you're going to need to, your arm ha is going to have to be extremely dry, just fully dry, because you can't, you can't mess this up. We're not putting anything over here, so it's fine. So you're going to need to take your scar wax and then one of these uh, paint spatulas. That's what I think they're called. And if yours is dirty, just clean it. You're going to put this on your arm. And just, oh, mine doesn't want to stick. Just, there it is, just smear it on your arm. Maybe I have to go to different, uh, like, just fully different directions because for some reason, it doesn't like going the same direction. But you're just going to keep layering it on. Makes a weird noise. Don't accidentally pull off your latex by doing it. Be very gen gentle. You're going to want to layer this on top in a sort of mound-like position in the area, area you're going to have your wound. So for me, center, probably up here and stopping around right here. So you can use, I guess, something else other than this. You can try using a knife, a butter knife, you can try, I would say don't use an actual knife, like a metal knife on this, use like a plastic butter knife, because it's just going to be hard to wash, but all you have to do, if, if you go over it and it's up coming off, it's fine, just put more, just put more, but you're going to want it. I'll smooth that out. Put more right here. You're gonna want some down here. You're gonna want it to stay on the latex. Just stay on the latex. Don't you can it's okay if it, you get it on your skin. I would just say have it stay on your on the latex part of your arm. Because when you're done with this fully, you can take it off and reapply it easily. 
without having the issue of your scar wax being on your arm without the latex underneath it and you won't be able to pull it off. Uh, don't use, if you don't have flour, don't use baby powder as a substitute for this. Uh, baby powder makes latex unable to stick to it. So if this had baby powder on in it, and we add the top layer, the next layer of latex on this, it's not going to stick. So don't do that. Now, yeah. All right, so now that you have this done, it should look something like this. Mine, don't mind that. Before, it should look like this. If something like this happens, I have a special step for this. To make it look like a very gruesome scrape. Or hole. We will do that later. So now that you have this, we have to take something sharp. Don't use a knife. Do not use a knife. Use something like a toothpick. You can use a toothpick. You can use a toothpick. You can use this thing if you have one. You can use a I don't remember what this was called. Uh, yeah, no, I do. <laughs> this is a wax tool, clay tool. This is a clay tool, clay scalpel thingy. You can use this, or you can, <laughs> but I think most likely the toothpick would be the best option. So you're just gonna go down this and whatever shape you want. We're gonna do a straight line, sort of. Now that you have that, you're just going to take the excess off of this. And carefully push the scar wax back. Carefully do that to make to build up some walls. So it looks like a decently sized uh, chunk of your flesh has been taken off. Now, if you if you do what I just did there, or just pull that up, you can fix it, or we'll just cover it with fake blood. You're gonna want this to be just lifted up. Lift it up in a way where it just looks like a giant chunk of your skin is gone. So yeah. Alright, so it should look something like that. Like how deep it is. Generally something like that. I don't know how good this, the light is. Yeah, you should look something like this. Now, next thing we're going to be doing is putting more latex over it. But this time, you're going to be trying not to put any latex near... We're going to call this the lips of the wound. And you're just going to try not to put anything inside the little the wound and or these little lips. We're just going to call it that. So, you're going to take your lid... If it has already dried, any of the leg tooth has dried, just peel it off. Easiest way. You're going to still need this, so just peel off all of the excess latex. Even if there's some still wet, just, just peel it off or just there, just that. Okay, so, you're going to take sneeze. I'm sorry, I thought I was about to sneeze. <laughs> okay, I'm fine. So, you're going to take your... Yeah. Little bit of latex.
and you're gonna want to put more more than two to three layers so about four to five layers yeah you're gonna want four to five layers so you're just like before you're gonna gently start tapping it on and you want this to be as smooth as possible you don't want any bubbles any like rips ripples build up of little bumps you're gonna want this as smooth as possible if there is build up of bumps or bubbles it's fine try and hide it with the cons with the foundation and makeup but you're also going to want to be careful not to push any of that down so when you do that take whatever you used use this and just push it back up there you go so Stay away from, stay that far away from it. But yeah. All right, so the next step, I already kind of started. You're gonna take a cotton swab, you're gonna dip it in your latex, and you're just gonna ever so gently just start layering it right here closest to the opening. Don't put it inside, but just start covering the top of the little bits right here. Just do that to where uh, the same amount of times of layers that you have put on your arm, just do it that many times. Just do it ever so gently. So you don't end up accidentally pushing down right, uh, this inwards because you don't want that. Just do it ever so gently. And you don't want to have it pull up. Bumps are fine. Bumps are fine on this because it's going to be covered by uh, blood. But yeah, that's, that's all you're going to need to do. Just keep dabbing it. And you're going to, for both of these, you're going to do it as many times as you can. Um, cover your con swab with a lot and then just dab it in the areas. It's fine. It'll take a while to dry, but it's the easiest way. So, yeah. Alright, so I kind of went on ahead and did this, but what you're going to need to do, is the next step for you guys to do, is you take a toothpick, the uh, biggest end, and you just kind of get some of your latex, and you just start slathering it on the inside. Doesn't matter if it builds up, doesn't matter if there's bubbles, it makes it look like your flesh has been ripped. Adds up. It adds texture. So do that about, you don't need it, need that many layers, do it about four, no, not four. Do it about two to three layers. So you, what do you want is you want to make sure you get the bottom of it, bottom of the inside, and then the walls. And then that's about it. You, if... If your thing rips, and you rips at all, like at what I that pin right here, what you can do is you can roll it, so it adds this giant little thing, and then you can keep adding a little latex around it to where it's about the same uh, thickness of this, and you can make it look like a raised scar. Maybe. So... Yeah, just keep doing that for a little bit, and two to three layers for that, and then we'll do the next step. All right, so now that all of this is dry, mostly, that will dry soon, we're going to be on to the makeup section, where you're going to use those. So, you can get your foundation, or if you're like me, who is pale, heck and uh yeah i'm gonna use this i'm more specifically, more specifically i'm gonna be using new white which i have already kind of destroyed so where is some one okay where are all my makeup sponges so you're gonna take a makeup sponge or cosmetic sponge, I should say, and or a makeup brush. And from what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take. Just, okay, why did I think to put my arm like this? Just 
take this and I'm gonna start smearing it. You just need a base coat, that's all you need. Just a base coat, and you're gonna want this to be completely dry. So, just, just a base coat. So, kind of like this. If if you have cream-based makeup, that's fine. Use that. If you don't and you just have a foundation, use that. Use the foundation. So, we're going to be just doing a couple different things. All right. All right, now that you have your skin tone done, you also used your powder. I don't know if I said that last time. Sorry if I didn't. Or before. You're going to be now adding the bruise part, where I'll be using these two bruise wheels, or you can get off Amazon, or if you have any reds, blues, purples, greens, yellows, uh, eyeshadow, you can use that, or oil paint. But we're going to be just making a bruise along the edges of this. So... I'm going off of the two colors of this, which are green, blue, red, purple, light red, a blackish color, and yellow, a mustard yellow. So those are the colors we're going off of. Wow, my hands. So we're going to be taking a medium-sized brush. It can be a makeup brush, paint brush. I'm using a makeup brush. You're first going to be taking your green. And you're just going to go along this. Just along it. Doesn't matter if it's light or dark. It will soon be blended away. So it's also going to be blended into your concealer, and that's fine. That is perfectly fine. This also is... If you decide to, you don't have to do this step. You can just cover that entire piece into with fake blood. But to me, it adds. It adds to it. So you're just going to go around. Just kind of blend it into your concealer, foundation, whatever it's called. You're going to do it on the other side. Just a tad bit. Doesn't matter if it's dark, as you can tell, I'm just, just gonna blend it in anyway. It's also gonna be covered. So, once you've got that done, once that's done, you have this. Looks weird, I know. You're gonna be taking your clean off. You're gonna clean off your brush. A little bit, and you're gonna be taking your yellow. Just add to it. This time, you're gonna go it up till the top. You're gonna try and blend that into the green slightly to make this weird color. It, it might take a while, so to get it right. All right, so I finished that. I kind of made a little bruise up here. You can make a bruise anywhere, but we do need to put it right here. You can do it anywhere else. I put one because, well, my arm bends, so I'm gonna, I decided to put one here. This is kind of what the bruise should look like on here. So, I forgot what order of colors I used. I remember what order of colors I used. So, what I also did was I took some of my foundation and I went over it slightly to lighten the colors. And we're also going to... <sighs> Next color I used was blue. Take your blue, and you just 
go wrong along just you're poking it at this point you're not doing any streaks you're just poking it however also be careful because i just realized there's our scar wax under this and uh you make indents but that is fine you can make it look like uh you have been repeatedly poked with a needle maybe just dab it slightly not not with enough force just dab it All right, so now that you have that, next step we're doing is you're taking your step with something. You're taking a cosmetic sponge. I'm going to be using the one I did right here because why not? And you're going to go to your purple. And you're going to slightly dab it. Just, just kind of randomly try to make that outline you're gonna smear everything later it's kind of there we go making that sort of outline not too dark not too light Now you're going to take your same brush thing, but you're going to go to the side and you're going to get your concealer. Concealer, foundation, whatever it is, and you're going to smear it. I'd say not to use a brush for this because you're going to want this color to be right. Can be a little hard, but it's fine. So it is kind of getting rid of the color, the purple color, which you will be going over slightly. Just you need to get these colors sort of. And you're gonna go to yellow. Slightly on this. Slightly, slightly back to green. Now you're gonna go back to your concealer, your uh, foundation. Actually, you know what? This this probably would be better with a, a brush. So use your brush. Sort of. Never mind. We're going back to this thing. Don't do what I just did right there. So yeah, you could use this. Sort of blend it. It's it's fine if there's blue. There's blue in in bruises. Blue dots and bru bruises. So. We'll fix that later. Use my finger. I don't know what happened here. Why is that lifted? Oh, that. Yeah, that. Oops. So, yeah, we just. Dab it on. You get this monstrosity. And then we go back to our purple. Also, so fix this real quickly. Kinda slightly fix this. You still want there to be an opening, so if you end up accidentally just drawing your opening, just Poke it back. 
There we go. So, I'm back to purple. All right, now, there was one other step. <laughs> um, yes, I remember, take a new uh, cosmetic sponge. It's seven. Take another, and you're gonna kind of just dab it on whatever. You're just gonna slightly, very, very, very lightly put a layer of it. So it sort of just looks infected. <laughs> that's, that's a better word for it. It looks infected. <sighs> and that is the bruise part. To separate this again. Alright, so you got that. It's fine if there's these creases. We're gonna fix that later. Alright, next step is we are going to do the inside of this, which from what I can do, you're gonna need your coagulated blood. Congealed blood. Coagulated. Ah, you can get this off of Amazon. For, uh, not that much money. I'm using this next. Stage blood, which is just corn syrup. Corn starch. starch. And you can just use corn syrup and, uh, red food dye. That, that's the same thing as this, basically. So, but for our bruise, we only are going to be using these two colors, which is just dark red and crimson red and red, which you can use for lipsticks. That's that's what you can use this for. And I'm going to need to take my brush. Don't, don't, don't get mad at me for doing this to my table. I will clean it later. And you're going to be sticking your red go along the edges. Just the edges. You can also use the brush to try and push it back to where it was originally. But you're just going to do some light taps or brush strokes. Very lightly around the edges. All right, next you're going to take your dark color, darker red. And you're going to do the dark red on the inside. Just the inside. Ooh, okay, I don't know what that was that came off. So sort of just looks like that. If you mess up, that's fine. This most likely won't, this will, depending on how much you put, this, the inside will probably not be seen. But we're gonna wanna try and make it as dark as you possibly can. Like that dark. And then next thing we're gonna be doing is taking the coagulated blood. Actually, there's something else. 
Um, do you have any raised bumps such as this? Just any bumps anywhere. You can make it look like they're just blood bumps. That's what I'm going to call it. My brain just stopped working. You can make it look like blood bumps or a, a healing scar. That's what you can do. And also these little, if you have any of these, you can just fill them up with the blood, with the uh, red. Sort of like that with something. If you have any of these. Just like that. Doesn't matter if you get it everywhere. It's gonna have, there's gonna be corn syrup and red food dye anyway. Or take something sharp. And you can just run it over there, because considering this entire thing has a lot of scar wax under it, even though there's latex, you can make indents yourself. So you can just do that. Yeah. Just don't accidentally cut the layers of latex with whatever you're using. Alright, so the next step, it should look something like this, maybe. I added some black to make it look like a scab. So we're going to be taking our congealed blood. If I can open it. Just, just I'm going to say something that might disgust people. It's going to look like red jam. <laughs> yeah. So this stuff, once it dries, it hardens. It hardens a lot. As I can give an example, right here, this is using congealed blood, the con uh, coagulated blood. It hardens, as you can tell. But it also looks like congealed blood. So, that's, we're going to put it along the rim of this. And maybe the, some on this. Okay. It's, it's going to take a lot to get this off but you're gonna need a small brush i'm gonna use a paintbrush because i'm not going to go through the trouble of trying to actually wash this off so you're just gonna here a little bit closer for you guys to see you're just going to go along the rim don't know if people could see that. Yeah, you guys can sort of see that. Go along the rim of it. And it's very, it's very, very sticky. So be careful when you're placing this down because it could accidentally pull up some of your latex and you don't want that so you're just gonna try to clear some space just a little bit right here and then oops it's a long list you can Put it inside. So, uh, if people don't have this, they can just skip this step and just go straight to the part where it has using the syrup blood. Stage blood, that's the name of it. Syrup blood. Oh, that's not good. So, like that. So I'm right here in this crevice. No, the crevice. And this crevice. And this one. you're going to want to put it in all the crevices. Just look like tiny cuts. Put some on top of this.
Also, try putting it on the... You can also start, like, just tapping it on the edge and rim. And it just kind of looks like it's been, a uh, smeared. You want to make sure you have it along the entire rim. Oh, no. I ripped my latex. Yeah, it looks like a hole, so it's fine. So you can probably see from by the glowing of it. The shininess of it, I should have said. Just on the entire part. And Oops. I would not recommend getting this on clothes, so if you want to make sure this doesn't get on clothes, wait for it to dry or solidify. Because you're gonna, it's gonna harden. And I wasn't really able to get it off. I have a feeling you can get it off. I just don't know how. I like that. Hmm. Damn it. All right, now. No, no, wait. Also, glob it on. Just put a blob it on. Because blobbing it looks realistic. So, just kind of get a spoonful of it. Brush phone, just blob it on. There we go, yeah. <sighs> Alright, so next thing we'll be doing, I can bring this up. Alright, so next thing we'll be doing is taking your stage blood or syrup blood or whatever you want to call it. And I'm gonna have to do his two hands. Squirt it on. Mainly down the center of this entire thing. Just Keep squirting it down the center. Yep. And then take a brush. Oops. And just kind of spread it a little bit. Oh, there's none right there. Kind of hit your arm on the bottom for it to settle into the actual thing. And then don't squeeze it or just get a brush and dab it. We'll be using a cosmetic sponge to get it out or just smush it, spread it more. Okay, now, cosmetic sponges, there we go. Should look like that. Be careful, however, this can pull up your latex. And your sponge should look relatively terrifying. If you want, make it look like it's dripping. So 
yeah, let's start adding a little bit more. Just round it. Gonna shake your arm to the side if you want it to drip. Use what's left over on your spot on your sponge, cosmetic sponge to just Spirit. Um. Yeah, there. And then let it dry. Just let it dry, and you're uh, you're done. With the monstrosity that we have created. So, <laughs> if you want, you can add more blood. Or you can do this, where, if you would like, once this has completely dried, you can take some of your powder. If I can do this with one hand. Take your brush or something you will not mind getting red blood on and kind of just pat it over the uh blood excess blood around so it can be a tad bit lighter and look like it's uh dried don't don't put it on the globby glob globby uh stuff but yeah it's gonna look like a that it uh dry or you can do what I did. And uh Okay, I have to fix this. There we go. But yeah, you can make it slightly lighter so it looks like it's uh dried blood. However, you will sacrifice a brush. But, uh, this can wash out. This this is fine. It can wash out. So it's pretty much fine. But yeah, you can just pat it down. Make it look like it's dried blood. Take a smaller brush. And, uh, take it, yeah, there we go. It could just look like it's, uh, dried blood. So, yeah, that's the last one. That's the last step, and you have this monstrosity that you have created.